Such is the state of the new car market, Skoda's SUV offering has tripled in size in three years flat. Starting with the Kodiak in 2016, the brand wasted no time in launching its second off-roader, the Karok, which arrived less than 12 months later. Now it's a turn as Skoda's smallest and arguably most important model, the Kamiq. This is a rival for the Renault Captur, Volkswagen T-Cross and the soon-to-be-replaced Nissan Juke. Instantly recognisable as the third of Skoda's SUVs, the Kamiq inherits its siblings' split headlights, clamshell bonnet and V-shaped grille. Based on the familiar MQB A0 platform, Skoda insists it offers all the flexibility and simply clever features we've come to expect in a smaller and more manageable package. On the whole, it feels solidly built. There's some soft, squishy rubber up here and some slightly cheaper plastics on the dash, but there's nothing really to complain about. The switches are easy to use and they feel solid too, and all the tactile points like the steering wheel and the gear knob are covered in leather. Skoda is looking to overtake its Seat sibling as the VW Group's tech leader, and a quick glance at the Kamiq's interior would suggest it's edging ever closer to that accolade. Our car had the optional 9.2-inch touchscreen, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The virtual cockpit dials are likely to be extra on mid-spec cars too, and while they aren't as clear or as configurable as Audi's setup, it adds a touch of class missing in many of the Kamiq's rivals. They are a nice to have rather than an essential piece of kit though. There'll be three engines at launch, two petrols and one diesel. The entry level engine is a 94 horsepower, one litre three cylinder turbo, and there's that same engine again with 113 brake horsepower. There's a 1.6 litre diesel, and later in the year, you'll find a 1.5 petrol added to the range. Today, we are driving the 1 litre 3 cylinder turbo with 113 brake horsepower. It's perfectly suited to this car with smooth acceleration right up to motorway speeds. Okay, it's not that quick, but it's perfectly sufficient for most buyers. Skoda has yet to reveal any official fuel economy or emissions data for the new Kamiq, but this engine is a known quantity as it's used throughout the VW Group range on a wide variety of vehicles. You can expect between 50 and 55 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of around 112 grams per kilometre, depending on spec and wheel size. Get up to 60 or 70 miles an hour and this car is an incredibly quiet place to be. There's no real road noise and the engine is completely hushed. The biggest disturbance actually comes from the wing mirrors and the A-pillars where there is a bit of wind noise. But in all honesty, this thing is more refined than it has any right to be. Skoda says the trim structure will largely mirror the new Scarless format, offering a choice of S, SE and SEL. Entry-level cars should bring 16-inch wheels, LED lights, the smallest 6.5-inch infotainment screen, DAB radio and manual air conditioning. Continuing to use the Scarlet as a guide, SE would add a larger 8-inch display, CarPlay and Android Auto, parking sensors, cruise control and an 8-speaker stereo. SEL sits atop the range, with 17-inch wheels, privacy glass, keyless entry, dual-zone climate control and that larger 9.2-inch sat-nav screen. Skoda has designed this car to be the third in its run of SUVs, and yet it doesn't feel like one from behind the wheel. The control weights are light, the steering doesn't have much feel, and the gear change and pedals don't have much weight to them. Yet, through the corners, there is plenty of grip, and body roll is almost non-existent. It strikes a really neat balance in this class, in fact. You've got cars like the Citroen C3 Aircross that prioritise comfort and tend to wallow through the corners, or there's a the Seat Arona which is a little bit firmer but sharper to drive. This sits somewhere in the middle and it's all the better for it. We've no real complaints about ride comfort either. Our car is sitting on 17 inch wheels which is likely to be the middle option between 16 and 18 inches. It doesn't crash over lumps and bumps around town and on the motorway it retains that level of composure which makes it a particularly good car for traveling long distances in which is not necessarily something you can say of its rivals. So the Kamiq ticks all the driving and technology boxes but what about practicality? Skoda prides itself on the simply clever touches that make all of its cars unique and rest assured the Kamiq is littered with bits and bobs designed to make this SUV incredibly easy to live with. There's the usual ice scraper in the fuel filler cap and an umbrella in the door. Dig a little deeper and you'll find an LED torch in the boot, a funnel for the washer fluid and slick, optional pop-out door protectors. But fun features aside, the Skoda Kamiq can absolutely shame rivals from the class above. The 400 litre boot is pretty much par for the course, but there is so much space back here. Look, I'm six foot tall, this seat is set up for my driving position and there is loads of knee room, and even with this panoramic roof, there's plenty of headroom as well.
The new Skoda Kamiq is predictably brilliant. It takes everything we love about the VW Group's tried and tested MQB platform and mixes it in a stylish, spacious and well-considered body. Of course, those all-important prices, specs and PCP deals could make or break this car's chances of success, but we think it's so good that we cannot wait to test it against its rivals in the coming months. Click the window on the left for our first drive of the Volkswagen T-Cross and on the right for a review of the punchy Skoda Kodiak VRS. Press the Auto Express logo to subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on the notifications so you never miss a video.